Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are looking here at the introduction. Okay, the introduction to the chapter on media access control. In this video, we will understand the problems that we face. Okay, the the need to develop media access control protocols. Why do we need this? Okay, we are looking at first. The problem. We are looking at three different types of protocols in this chapter: random access, controlled access, and channelization. Okay. Now let's look at first the reason as to why we need this <clears throat> this set of protocols. Okay. Let's say. We have two stations, okay, or more stations. There can be more stations, and these stations are sharing the same network. Okay, these stations are sharing the same network, the same link. If these devices. Try to send at the same time. There will be a collision. Okay, the packets will crash. Okay, packets crash into each other. Okay, and get lost. Okay, this is. Collision, okay. A, a real life example. In the classroom, if I speak and you speak at the same time, we both end up losing the information, right? No one can understand because we interfere with one another, and then what do we have to do? We have to repeat ourselves again, but again, if we speak at the same time, no one will understand. So we have to again say the same thing. So what is happening here? Our repeating again and again and again. We are wasting time, right? We are wasting time. So I, if I, so if I, and the student. We both speak at the same time. The information clashes and gets lost. This is the same thing that happens in a network. Okay, if two stations send the information at the same time, there is a collision and the packets get lost. So, if we are having Let's say this network is one Mbps. It means it can send one Mb data, okay, in one second. Okay, this is the meaning of one Mbps. So in an ideal situation. We should be able to send in one second one megabit of data, okay? But the same thing as we said that if I speak and you speak at the same time, we the information is lost, and then again if I speak and you speak at the same time, the second time, again the information is lost, and if you do the third time. Again, the information is lost, so it is frustrating, right? So we are both speaking at the same time, and we are losing the information, and we keep doing it. So what is this causing? It is wasting our time. It's wasting our time. So if I am teaching, and in five minutes, okay, if in five minutes I should cover a concept. I will not be able to cover so because we have been wasting time. Similarly, in this scenario, 
If everything goes fine, then the devices should be able to send 1 megabit in 1 second. But if there is a collision, then they will end up sending the same packet, the same information again and again and again. So they cannot achieve this speed of 1 Mbps, okay? It will be less than 1 Mbps. So collisions are harmful, okay? Collisions are harmful. They have, they cause problems. So we have to always avoid collisions, okay? So this is the problem that we face in a network, okay? This is always, this is the problem that we face. So to resolve this problem, we have developed the media access control layer, okay? We have developed the media access control layer. Media, okay, your medium, it can be wired or it can be wireless access. How can you use this medium? Okay, access and control. So you are developing a set of rules to control how can two machines send or share the same link without causing collisions. Okay, this is the important main function of the media access control layer. So in this case, we have different scenarios, okay? In this case, we have machines sharing a wired link. This is a wired network, okay? Here we have mobile devices sharing the same airspace, okay? So they are still sharing the medium. And here also another example of wireless, we have three transceivers. So they can send and receive, okay, transceivers all communicating with the same satellite. So they're sharing the communication to the satellite. Okay, so in all these three examples, we have multiple access. Okay, we have multiple access. More than one device communicating at the same time. So to sum up the problem, we say when two or more devices communicate at the same time, okay, when two or more nodes transmit at the same time, then their frames will collide and the link bandwidth is wasted, okay? So instead of using one, instead of being able to send one MB in one second, we are wasting the link bandwidth and because of collisions, we might be able to send very less, okay? We might be able to send maybe 18 kbps or 500 kbps, which is bad. So how can we decide or control or coordinate the access of multiple sending and receiving nodes to the shared link. So the solution is to this, we need a set of rules, right? We need a protocol. We need set of rules that will decide who will go first, okay? They will decide who will go first. So the medium access control protocols, this is what they will do, okay? Their main task is to minimize collisions, to reduce the number of collisions, to utilize or to use the bandwidth. So the bandwidth in our example, we said one Mbps. 
So how can we use this to the maximum? Okay, by reducing the number of collisions. And for this, we are to achieve this, we are defining a set of rules. Okay, and what do these rules decide? They decide when can a station use the link, number one, okay? When can a station use the link? What will a station do if the link is busy, okay? So, number two, if I want to send something and if I find the link busy, what do I do? In the case of our class example, the rule is, that only one of us speaks. Either I speak or you speak. Okay, so that is a rule. Okay, that is the protocol of the class. And this third is, if a collision takes place, okay, if a collision to, should, takes place, then what should the station do? Okay, if the collision has happened, how can we decide what the station does. So there are three important things that the medium access control or multiple access control protocols take care of. So we have different types. We have random access protocols, which means they can a device can send and receive anytime. There is no control over the device. Okay? As long as they follow the set of rules given to them, they can send and receive anytime. Then we have the next category, which is controlled access protocols. In controlled access protocols, we have someone in charge, okay? Or someone having a priority, higher in status. Some station is higher in status. And we have channelization where we, how are we sharing the medium, okay? Frequency division, time division, or code division. And we will look at it in the next videos. So this is the problem, okay, that we face with a shared medium, okay? So we said that if we are having more than one device, sending the information at the same time, then we end up causing a collision, right? So we have to avoid this collision. So this was what we spoke of in this video. In the next video, we will look at Aloha Protocol.